as we know, in 2018, the government of St. Martin initiated a public discussion on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. They identified 17 goals that would help um, with the related equitable, socioeconomic, and diverse and inclusive uh, information when it comes to making sure that the island is prepared not only in infrastructure but also for climate change and anything coming in the future. Taking this into consideration, this seminar is gonna to be touching on point number nine of the SDG of the Sustainable Goals and that is infrastructure and development and innovation. So these fine young gentlemen here are gonna be giving us some very interesting information about just that. Before I get started, I'd like to give a quote that, it's an old quote from 1992, but I think it still is, is relevant today. Caribbean technology and education must develop the attitudes, values of the Caribbean people so that they might use the capability it provides in ways that safeguard the good of the entire region. And I am hoping to see some information that not only includes technology as a whole within the world, but also how it will actually be used and implemented on St. Martin based on our culture, based on the way we live, and how it can actually increase all of those things. So, without further ado, protocol has been established, and I would like to bring up the first speaker. This first speaker was born into an entrepreneurial family. He set out during his early years creating a career for himself, trying to blend innovative solutions and entrepreneurship. He initiated and co-funded Godfather Sounds, which was an entertainment group, and quickly orchestrated their own online radio platform known as First Line Radio. He then moved on to create Hashtag Dash True Brand. It's now six years old, consulting with organizations and introducing them to innovative solutions. Especially within the online world, the digital landscape, and of course, social media solutions. He has a bachelor's degree in business administration. He was one of the first ever graduates from In Holland University in the program of media entertainment management in The Hague. He is currently pursuing his MBA in entrepreneurship in the Caribbean, and today, he has a broad field of entrepreneurial experience which spans from entertainment to branding and design technology education. I would like for you guys to give a warm welcome to this gentleman, Mr. Damien Schmidt. Um, thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you very much for the invitation to be here. I feel honored and um, you know, I hope I'm able to uh, set the pace and set the tone for the, these great gentlemen that will come after me. Um, today, I want to give you a quick introduction to innovative business strategies, uh, innovative strategies, and um, let me just introduce myself a bit more than what has been um, discussed before. We'll go through that as well, and then um, we'll go into 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 um, the We'll discuss innovation, innovative strategies, some local innovations, um, projects that I've been personally a part of and how we can integrate innovation into what we're doing, basically. So, I think you guys heard a bit about myself. I don't want to drag it on because I only have 20 minutes, and uh, apparently we're strict, to, strict on time. Uh, one model that I, int that I developed and introduced was the, uh, so I just want to touch on a few projects that I didn't get to um, talk about during my introduction. This is the love cue model, and the love cue model basically explains how people fall in love. And I don't like to um, play like I'm a love expert, but it's mainly focused on how people fall in love with brands, actually. I'm a bit more versed on that um, area than the interpersonal relationships. So that's definitely something interesting. I would love an opportunity to come back and talk about that some more. Um, another project that I initiated is, I think we mentioned it before, the Love the Dash True Music, where um, I noticed that a lot of us as Caribbean artists create music, 
but the music just stayed here, stays locally, stays within the local communities. My idea is to take this music and be able to have it onto the online platforms, the iTunes, the Spotify's, the Deezer's, the Shazam's, etc. I've been successful so far. As a matter of fact, I just got another call today for another um, client who is interested in uh, getting the music online. Um, some of you may be familiar with Youth Waves. Some of you, it's a small band. Small band. <laughs> um, I have their music as well. Uh, I have some of the music from, um, well, one song actually from uh, King Verse. People know Verse? Yeah? It's like you're not too sure, you know. Uh, his music, we um, recently, I recently did a song for him as well, and a few others. Uh, it's going well, um, but I think the fight there is a, a lot more with the artists, the local artists, than. Um, with the technology itself. I'll skip through this because again, for time, um, I just wanna to touch on this. This is the uh, picture from the Yeso Entrepreneurship Workshop that I did over in St. Eustatius with the Mega D Foundation. Uh, the idea there was basically to bring and promote entrepreneurship within the youths on the Dutch Caribbean islands. So the idea is to kinda take entrepreneurship as a concept, as a, as a, as a teaching basically and bring it closer to the kids bring it closer to them so that they, they'll be able to see that they'll be, they can already start their business or at least pursue their business from a young age in the Dutch Caribbean. When I was growing up, if you wanted to start a business, you only had uh, a certain, a certain areas you can operate in. Now with the, the internet as the great equalizer, uh, that has all changed. You can start an online business with it within a few clicks and I'll show you an example of one of those projects that I started. So to get into innovation and innovative strategies, this is one quote from Besant and Tid. Innovation is a process leading to the successful exploitation of new ideas. And with exploitation, we mean to make or save money. And with new ideas, we mean inventions or discoveries. This is a, a, a bit more information. So we're kind of trying to paint a picture of what innovation is. This is another uh, quote from, C, C, I think it's CBS Bank in Canada. Innovation is often equated with invention. Invention, uh, so invention is the creation of something that didn't exist before. Extensive work by a research and development department. A high-tech product backing by venture capital. Not all businesses invent things. However, inno innovation is accessible to every business. We're going a little further. Innovation is above all a mindset, and this is one thing I want you to definitely pay attention to and, and go home with. If you forget everything else, I remember, everything else I say tonight, I want you to remember this one thing, that innovation is above all a what? Mindset. You sound like you're not sure. Innovation is above all a? Mindset. One more time. Innovation is above all a? Mindset. There we go. There we go. I think you're going home with it now. Uh, innovation is about... Continuously improving your products and services, implementing better processes, finding new ways to reaching markets. Yes, innovation can be, technologically, uh, can be a technological breakthrough, but it can also be a constant incremental changes that bring about continuous improvement and growth to your business. And that means innovation is for every business, including yours. Moving further again, looking at innovation from another perspective, innovation induces potential customers to pay more, saves them money, or provides some larger societal benefit like improved health or cleaner water. It might make a product perform better or make it easier or more convenient to use, more reliable, more durable, cheaper, and so on. So I think with that we have a, a, a very good idea of what um, innovation is, right? Yes or no? Yes, okay, okay. Innovation can also be very simple. Uh, these are some examples, two quick examples of what innovation can be. Uh, the above picture is a picture of a, a, a stacked freight train. So the idea is you take the same train and you stack it with extra, extra level of containers. In that way, you're carrying twice the load with the same trip. Um, another Great breakthrough for restaurants, McDonald's and the like. Serving, cu serving customers through the, through the drive-through. 
Now we're moving onwards towards uh, innovative strategy, uh, innovation strategies. And with that, we have three main approaches to innovation strategy. The first one is what we call the need seekers. So there we're looking at companies such as Apple who, t who um, make use of their superior insights about consumer, customer needs to generate new product ideas. Um, a couple years ago, I think nobody here is under 20, right? No? Okay, good. So everybody remembers more, more or less about 10-ish, 15-ish years ago, there was no smartphone like we have now, correct? Um, I think the smartest phone we had was like one of those Sony Ericsson phones, and the, the, the most innovative thing that it could do was take pictures. Uh, uh, um, it had a color screen, correct? A few years ago, I think it was in 20, uh, 2006, if I'm not mistaken, Apple released the iPhone. I'm not a big Apple fan, so let's just get that out there. <laughs> um, but as, as an as a innovative company, you definitely have to give them, um, give them their props. So Apple introduced innovations such as the iPhone. Uh, they actually also introduced what we call the, I, um, the, the iPod. Everybody remember the iPad? The iPod? Also, Apple introduced the, um, the iPad. Before these products, there was nothing in the market like it. Before the iPod, you had the, the, the MP3 players that came close, but it was not as, uh, it was not, it didn't have, uh, MP3, at the, MP3 players at the time didn't have the same uh, ease of use as the iPod, correct? Those of you that had the iPod. Moving on, we have the market readers as a second approach. And here we look at companies such as Samsung who focus on creating value by incrementally improving on products that have already been proven in the market. Um, a few years ago, again, uh, today maybe these things seem like common knowledge, oh, you, you, you go and you buy a, a Samsung phone. But I remember as a techie, I remember when we heard that um, Samsung was bringing out the first phone, it was like, Samsung? Any, anybody remember? The first Samsung phones? No? It's not too sure. Okay. I, mean, I guess I'm the only techie in the room. Um, but if you remember correctly, a few years ago, Samsung was not in, they, they were nowhere uh, creating phones. I think the first Samsung phone they had was this small, um, no, that was Panasonic actually. But uh, Samsung was making these, these um, they, they decided to get into the market of creating mobile phones when they saw that these phones that um, mobile, as a, as, a, as, a, as a business started to be so successful, yeah? Uh, the same thing they have with the semiconductors, actually. Samsung wasn't really actually making semiconductors. They started to see that the business of semiconductors and mobile uh, was doing so well, and then they decided, hey, let's get into this business, and now they are, in most cases, the, 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 the leaders in the business. Moving on again, we have the technology drivers, and here we're looking at companies such as Google, who depend on their strong internal technology capabilities to develop new products. Uh, we're looking at Gmail. Again, a few years ago, more than a few years ago, I think that was uh, maybe around 2000-ish, I don't remember to be honest, um, G Google decided to release Gmail. At the time, another online email platform, everybody had um, um, Hotmail. Hotmail at the time, everybody had uh, Yahoo. But if you remember correctly, um, Google then introduced Gmail, and with Gmail you had one gigabyte of storage. At the time, again, it was like, whoa, you know. Um, again, these are, these are tech, and again, look at Google now, where they, they released Android phones, and now they're doing one of the, their, the biggest, the most selling phones in, in, the, in the market. Uh, so these are three different strategies, three different approaches that you can take when considering uh, your innovative stra strategy as a business. Uh, this is a picture of the innovative landscape. I hope everybody's familiar with uh, Matrix and how it works. Um, this um, axis here on the, the top axis we, we have um, businesses or innovations that require a new business model. Here we have, on this axis, we have innovations that leverage the existing business model of, of um, whatever company that we're looking at.
in that column, we have innovations that leverage the existing technical competencies of the business. And in this column, we have um, innovations that require new technical competencies. Now, one of the things that um, I don't want to spend too much time ag again because time is running out. I got five more minutes. Um, but we're looking here at disruption. You hear, if you uh, um, follow the news a lot, you hear a lot maybe about um, disruptive technology or dis disruptive innovations, disruptive businesses. Those are businesses who come into the market and do things completely different um, with um, existing technical competencies. And, ex and in some cases, in some cases, existing technologies that are there uh, as well. I'll show a few examples of those um, later on. Um, routine technology, uh, sorry, routine innovation <laughs> is sometimes what a lot of people do. And even though it may be down in the bottom left-hand corner of the matrix, <laughs> it's not to be overlooked because routine, for me, routine, routine innovation or uh, having a routine innovative strategy is one of those um, um, how you say, major, um, that's how you move forward, basically. Um, and a lot of companies, in most cases, we resort to this um, uh, type of strategy. I'm not, I'm, I do remember seeing a few faces who were there last night, but last night, uh, Web Bank opened their first self service branch on Bush Road. So if you haven't seen it as yet, um, feel free to go and, 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 and check it out. And while it's definitely filled with a lot of innovative um, approaches, and I love it, and I love the guys who are, who are, who are uh, involved with it, I know some of them personally, um, <coughs> my only thing is this is where we're supposed to be right now. All of our banks on St. Martin, left up to me, would have been um, here now, okay? The banks of the future is something else, okay? Um, but definitely a, a very good approach and um, glad to see that even in the banking industry here in St. Martin, we have innovate, uh, innovations. Who remember these? Yeah, one or two? Yeah? Okay, you in the back, okay, okay. Um, I remember the first time I saw these, um, I think my brother got one. I was younger, much younger, um, in my teens for sure. Then they started to get bricks and a kickstand. Then, uh, well, now they are the fold. They, we have the foldable versions. But not only that, I took a conference trip a few weeks ago, and now they are a part of a massive online business, uh, um, what we call a, a ride-share ride share business. You could talk more about that later. I have a quick video, I hope it works. Okay, we can talk a bit more about this um, business later. Moving along, this is um, a project that I'm definitely very proud of. Uh, anybody here had to send kids away for school in the past maybe two, three years, four years? No? Um, so I'll explain briefly how the process worked uh, prior to 2004, I think. Yeah, I think that's when we started. So before 2000, sorry, 2014. Uh, before 2014, we had um, if you wanted to apply for a scholarship to leave St. Martin, you had to get the form, 
fill it, take it home, go to, um, fill it home with your parents, um, all the forms, get all the documents, bring them back in. Um, the the, the, the uh, colleagues at the study financing department here, they would then have to type over all of that information back into their system with or without errors, um, and then confirm the information, confirm that you have all the documents. It took a very long time. In 2014, if I'm not mistaken, 2015, uh, we, I worked together with the study financing department to digitalize that process. Um, in terms of students would then be able to go online, go on go onto the study financing um, website, fill in the information. The information gets automatically printed out onto the form. They print out the form, they sign it, they bring it in, story is finished. On the digital side, as soon as they press send on the computer, the information is then saved on a server somewhere, and then the that information is then compiled when everybody is finished and the, and the, the application um, time frame is closed. That information is then all downloaded in one file, stored into the database. No need to have to store and, and retype and whatnot. Um, it saved the study financing department, if I'm not mistaken, and if I remember correctly, about three months work. Every time I have to think about that story, it kind of gives me chills because I can't imagine having to do that for spend three months of your year spending just typing in information before they could actually process the information, right? Uh, today we actually have now a, port, uh, a portal, what we call a portal, where the students now go online, they fill out on the information, it's saved, the agents at the study financing department, they go in, they see the information, they process the information and it's done. Yeah, uh, a similar situation. Uh, this is flowers by by Flores. Flowers by Flores. Yes, um, she has a lot of customers who come from abroad, uh, from who deal with the yachts and whatnot, and she wanted a system where customers will be able to see the orders in advance, see the categories, choose what they want, send her email, send her order. When they come here, they they, they round off payment, and that's it. And it's done. You can check out the website. It's flowersbyflores.sx. This is another innovation, uh, not necessarily local. It's actually, um, the lady is actually from Stacia. And as of Saturday, the oils would be, her oils, Saza's oils would be available at Beautylicious. Um, what's different here and what's innovative here is instead of, normally you would have oils for your hair. The ladies know, the naturalistas, uh, they know. Um, but what she's doing different is she's actually infusing the oils with herbs. I don't, know I don't know exactly what that means, but it's supposed to be very good. I see some heads nodding, yeah. yeah. Um, just before I wrap up, this is a project that I actually wanted to introduce and sort of demo today, but again, before, because of time, I'll just be able to show you a slide. The idea here is that um, you'll be able to buy all your tickets for shows, concerts, and events, and even tours um, via this website. You pay with your credit card. You pay, those of you from Holland, you can pay with your ideal. Uh, you buy your ticket, you download your ticket, you show up at the show, you show them your ticket, they scan the ticket, you go to the show, and they have less tickets to print, right? This is a project, uh, a personal project of mine. I hope to have it up and running soon. So if you know promoters who are looking for an easier way to sell their tickets, Definitely, I have some cards. Um, just before I close, the last major question we have, we looked at innovation, we looked at innovative strategies. Um, the question is, whose job is it to set the strategy? And in short, the most senior leaders of the organization. Um, I want to email, I, I designed this so that you can uh, get it via email. I left it here on the, on the, on the computer so the organizers will be able to email it out to everybody. So you can spend some time and go through this and go through these four tips that we have uh, that, I, that I included. Um, one of the things, this is a recipe for innovation. One of the things I wanted to touch on here is the, the tip of keeping up with the trends. You cannot be innovative if you're not keeping up with the trends, reading, um, staying up to date with the news, seeing what's new out there, etc. 
Um, and this is also where the universities and, and um, government organizations come in because they would also be able to assist and help with studying, doing the research of whatever uh, project that you have. Um, that you have. Uh, I wanted to go in on testing, but um, because of time, I just want to say that testing is very important and you should test as much as possible, as soon as possible, as often as possible. Uh, it doesn't cost much money to test a, pro uh, a prototype, a project. Um, the, the Bluebead website I had up in about a week and it cost me the domain name and a bit of time, actually. Um, again, the, my last point that I wanted to end on is this point that I wanted you to go home with. Innovation is about you. Innovation is about your mindset. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you for the opportunity for being here. I, I tried to bring something forward. So I did some research on what does this topic mean for me. Um, I see myself as an innovator. Um, what I left out was that my company out here on St. Martin, I also call Innovatus, Innovus. It, it, it stems from the Latin world of innovation. Now, if we go into business development, business development goes hand in hand with innovation, as Mr. Schmidt said. Um, I'm gonna go to the next slide. Okay, so I chose some stuff. So what or who are considered small island development states? Because that's where we need to start thinking from, um, as I already said for this evening, uh, the SIDS. Don't Google SIDS because you're gonna get a whole different meaning than the small <laughs> development states. And how are, how are new technologies affecting these countries uh, socially and also financially? Now, you could also think on how can we, as a SIT um, country or a state, use these new technologies to our advantage? Already my, the, my, my colleague here for the evening um, already gave some good ideas and good innovative um, plans as to how we could incorporate development of our country using new technologies. And as, 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 as we know that as last, I'm gonna come with a little bit of an of a example on how I think, um, based on my history, based on my experience, especially with regards to infrastructure, how we could implement this together with the USM and making a program that counts. So first, so what or who are considered small island development states? So if you read, um, and again, all of this information is found on, your, on, the, on the World Wide Web. It's, it's not something that Ben, Benny is thinking of, it's something that is a, have been developed already for many years and through UN and through um, other, other organizations are being brought forward now to the various platforms within the Caribbean and also other countries that are considered states countries. So small island development states are a group of small island countries that tend to share similar sustainable development challenges. We know we have a lot that here including small but growing population, limited resources, um, especially when it comes to the natural disasters I want to touch on. Again, that beloved name that everybody wants to forget. It makes us extremely vulnerable, but also world econ um, economic um, differences that affect us here in St. Martin is something that we, as, uh, as a sit state, um, are, are, are prone to. Now, international trade, um, Mr. DeWeaver, you, you know all about that. With, with regards to your field of, of economics, with trade, we have to stay on top of the game. You know, um, we have, a, a, unfortunately, a one-pillar economy that we are trying to develop new technologies and develop new strengths to, to bring in, bring in um, different type of monies, but different type of resources, but it is challenging. Now, going forward, I want to touch base on the, um, the point of infrastructure. We know that not only our physical infrastructure, but also our technical infrastructure is not what it takes, it is not what it should be to, to raise to the next level. But we have the opportunity to do so. And that makes us special as St. Martin. Um, if we compare to other countries or other states that are considered also states, St. Martin is a special place because we, are, we have almost everything gaming for us. We have, we have the possibility of all technological um, uh, advancements that we, are, we could touch into. And a lot of other countries don't have these things. Now, if we look at 
um, an overview of some six uh, states that, that are uh, worldwide. We see, of course, the Caribbean. Um, St. Martin is not mentioned there, um, but we do have our sister country in Anguilla, and we have the Netherlands Antilles below. And we have also here in the Pacific, and we have also um, countries or, or, or islands that are considered small island development states. Now, how are new technologies affecting these countries socially and financially? Again, it's not Benny said, it's all found on the internet. And if you research and you Google, you'll be able to put the, 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 the sense to the matter. So, went on UN.org and Sustainable Development Goals, it's talking about the SDGs, promoting knowledge, skills, technologies, and businesses support in small island development states will help foster industry and productive, productive activities. Can't be more clear than that. It cannot be more clear than that, ladies and gentlemen. In a small island development state, land size, population size can make a large scale industry problematic and unsustainable. Hence, we gotta think about our carrying capacity here in St. Martin. We want more, we want bigger, we want more cruise ships. Yes, I work at a port as well. We want more buildings, we want more bigger flagship hotels. But can we carry that? Will it be sustainable for St. Martin to say it's gonna bring us to the next level? That, and what is that next level that we want to achieve? We have to start thinking about these things from now to in order to be innovative for the future for our children. So I'm not gonna repeat everything that's there because again, you could look it all up and there are a lot more smarter person than me that have doctored this information already and, and it's presented to you for your liking. Now, I went again a little further. So this, this was really um, eye-catching for me on the website. So I took a little print screen of it. You know, entrepreneurship and innovation essential for the growth of small island development states again. You see that gentleman there, he's seemingly working on something electrical or a, 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 uh, something to do with internet. And we need to start pushing these type of developments. Because if we lag behind on the infrastructural part, we will then lag behind on the further development of St. Martin. We are talking too much that, oh, my website ain't working, oh, my internet ain't working, oh, my phone ain't working because I'm going through a black hole or a tunnel in St. Martin. But these are the things we need to start investing in. And these are the things that are going to start um, curbing our youth in the thinking in, in an innovative manner. So, again, an article on mobile technology, just mention it, offers extensive help on various forms of social and economic development. If anyone asks me, I feel that social media ain't that social. But you could use the technology behind it to promote something that is missing here in St. Martin or to add value to where we want to bring it. Business for us. So, Going through a bunch of articles, and again, I'm regurgitating that is what is already there and what a lot of you already know. You know, trade and technology present the opportunity when they are able to leverage existing capabilities and thereby provide a more direct and reliable path to development. Think about that. Just, just ponder on it just for a little bit. And then you go to the new part. New technologies reduce the prices of goods. Mr. De Weaver, your department, your ministry, all we do is check prices of goods and bring in that value, that added value to the people of St. Martin. Through new technologies, we could reduce the prices of goods and services to which they are applied. It is not rocket science, but it is us, the business community, first and foremost, to, to stimulate and to, to, to create the platform for new technology. We have a rule that we used to say last year within the chamber. The business development, the business community must lead and government and public sector will follow because we need to show there is something different because when you start a business, you start a business to be what? Successful. So why should you take and accept mediocre behavior from yourself and not come with innovative ideas to promote your own business. Think about that. So, when I, you know, how, do, how do I plan and how do I present something that, that has everything to do with my background? You know, uh, infrastructure management, urban development, um, ge geographical infrastructural systems, 
GIS, the social media that I don't really like. How do I implement something? How do I bring something forward that could make value to the USM? And I'd like to touch and like to show you guys, I hope this works. Wait for it. Well, it doesn't seem as if. Okay. Nevertheless, we can go to the next slide. The video, and again, it could be shared with you guys, is of Street View. It's a it's a it's an it's an added app or map within our Google Maps that you're able to drive through. Um, press on show me the direction, other than just showing you the of you that we have, and we are accustomed to this, you know, looking for a, a, an address, it will be able to show you the direction live or streaming-wise. streaming, streaming wise. So you're able to see what's out there. You could stop, you could zoom in, you could see what the street name is, you could see if the light is on, you could see if the pothole is there, all types of images. It coming, it's coming, a little bit, this is like our technology is a little bit slow, but it's coming, it's coming, we're coming. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean to hit this so hard, sorry. <laughs> so I'm gonna just go back. I mean, you get, you get the point. So, in doing my research, um, do we have street food in St. Martin? No. Is it something that we should have? Yes. Because of the technology is there. This is, this is a clear that I took this afternoon from maps of St. Martin with the satellite video. We're here at the University of St. Martin. How do you get to the Chamber of Commerce to open a new business tomorrow? Now, can I click and say, show me the way? Yeah, you can show me the way on, on, on just the regular directions. But I want to have maybe that street view. I, I'm, I'm new here. I, I'm, I'm not familiar with our driving, our driving um, technique or our methods or whatever have you. Uh, driving the roundabout wrong, which we know some of our guests here on the island take that, and you know they, they mess it up. With a street view technology, we'll be able to showcase that. But I'm going a little further now for you. In, in, in what I was trying to say is that now the street view here on the island, we would be able to present our businesses as well. So I'm going to go to it. So together with the USM, creating a an, an, an graduate program for, for, for technology using, using the street vision idea or, or methodology, um, our youngsters could be, could, could be given the task to create an app or uh, some sort of drone technology that could be embedded into whether it was on a phone that businesses could download or, um, or, or they could apply to. So anyone could upload from cell because how much cells people got? I, I, I walk with two cells and one of them have two, two numbers on it. So we always have our cell on us. We are always taking pictures and, and, and videos. So this information, if you start to use this information now for a more business um, development, you as a business owner could encourage your, 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 your clientele to take pictures, to, to come to your business and show how to get to your business. Upload this information for everyone. It's like what the Facebook would do. Instead of sharing pictures about Mele, you're sharing pictures for development of your business. And the fact that, that we could use this information and we could use this technology for also government's perspective to doing um, uh, uh, I say inspections of our road conditions, traffic signs, because with the street view, you could do, have a 360 view of, of, of the area that you, that you, that you, that you know, they're showcasing. This is all technology that is out there. And, and it could be easily adapted to any local app by, by a, a, a group of maybe five or, or ten um, graduate students developing something, as an example. And when, and it's, that's, that's the most important part, the business part now. So you could browse my business, highlights it, pictures and shots, the same thing you do on Instagram and so, now making it work for you on a different level. The graduates could continue to with marketing and business plan, Together with Mr. Schmidt there, they could come in who make a whole presentation and a whole another level for themselves. So after graduating, they become entrepreneurs. Isn't that what we want? Isn't that development? Isn't that our, and I'm a little bit um, disappointed that I don't see as much youngsters in the audience today 
that will be the innovators of tomorrow. So we have a task as well to, to, to guide them, to pull them, to, to encourage them to move forward to another, to another level. So the graduate program could be based on a business plan, funded and carried by bi the business community because ultimately this is where it's going to add profit, add value. Create the entrepreneurship and stimulate new business development that will put St. Martin on the map digitally and also literally. Ladies and gentlemen, that was my time and thank you for giving a thing. Yeah, what I, what I wanted to do actually is to start out by first thanking a few people, you know. Um, most important, my mother. Everybody knows and have heard of a Paula Busby. You know, I want to make sure that that name is, is um, recognized and known because anything that I'm doing, honestly, without my mother being there backing me up all my life up to today, I don't think I would be here right now. You know, I have a couple of other people. Yeah, thank you. That's good. Well, since she did that, she's the f she is the only female contractor on St. Martin, 50 years going, and she's still there. Yes? Powerful. Um, I must give also a little shout out to Mr. Greg Arundel. He's sitting right there. You know, thank you. He's always there backing, supporting, and encouraging. Also, uh, Dr. Guadalupe, uh, he's not here today, but he was also instrumental in making me be a part of the university and us doing what we're doing, even right now being here. And as well as Dr. Carmona, thank you. Um, Dr. Uh, Rolinda Carta as well. And also, um, I want to say some uh, thanks to Commander Bud Slaberth. He's sitting right there. He's always hiding out in the back or somewhere else, but he's right there. He, um, he's one of my mentors. Whenever I'm talking nonsense, he tells me, it's nonsense. Make it right. Fix it. You know? And then uh, you need people like that. You don't need everybody just buttering you. You, know? you need somebody to tell you, hey, it's not good. You know? Or just the best way to make it work. So that's, in, that's important in life. Um, I also have a friend, uh, of course, a partner, Titania um, Archangel, and then my daughter, Salome Richardson, she's back there. Oh, very good, very good. Attention seeker, grabber. <laughs> anyway, um, and really, honestly, it's a real great honor um, with Damien and uh, Damien, Damien, you know, and then Benny, um, us being able to talk about innovation and um, really looking at how that works in St. Martin and as well as how that works in the region. Um, what I'm going to do tonight, actually, is I don't have much time, everybody got a little bit of time, but within the time frame that we have, the idea is there's a lot of information in the back that I put there so we can kind of browse through. But what is important, I think, to, to understand is what should we as the university do? Um, I am teaching at the university as well, but what I think is also one of the factors is how many faculties does the university need? How many can be still added? Oh, but we're going through struggles and trouble. What is the vision? Let us think ahead. And within that context, I believe it is important to look at developing uh, an institution that deals with innovation and technology. We would call it, for example, Caribbean Institute for Innovation and Technology. St. Martin doesn't have one of those. We have a lot of innovators and, and different activities going on, but it's also important to figure out, okay, what should be the topics uh, within that context? I don't have all the answers. But together we have the answers. We can sit down, talk, and discuss, and begin to brainstorm. And then within that context, I'm just making a stab at it today. And the objective is to focus on three areas. And that is then looking at the Caribbean and understanding the dynamics of the Caribbean. Looking at then the Earth and what would be important for us to understand in terms of Earth studies. And then looking at space and understanding what we should do in terms of looking at going beyond. Why I'm saying that is it seems like it's, it's maybe not our cup of tea, why we, why we should do this. No, we should be a part of the innovation and we should be sitting at the table with the global innovators, the global discu um, um, dis um, discussions that are going on because we are affected by every decision that's made abroad or wherever else, we are affected. We should be then sitting at those tables, but to get on that table, we also need to start innovating, not appropriating innovations, but innovating our own ideas and then taking that out. Anyway, that was a quick little note in between. I don't start presenting already. Uh, 
Um, what I want to do then is this. I'm going to run a video. I'll start with it. I think this is the one, right? Um, are we good here? Let me see if this is going to be the good one. No image? To what? Play? Got the image up here. Playlist? This one here? No, oh, up here. Got yeah. it jumped away, huh? Yeah. So okay, just to stage or explain a little bit, this one here, the the clip, it's gonna go through different phases, different things it's gonna talk about. Um, we're gonna be looking at China uh, here. There, it's, it's gonna go all over the place, seemingly. But the reason for that is because these are things going on, and why are we not showing these things about the Caribbean? Where's our innovations? Where's our story in this world dynamic? You know. Anyway, that's the idea. Can we turn on the light here?
So as you, as you could see there, for example, there's a lot of different information that was pr um, represented there. Um, the gentleman, um, Neil um, Tyson, he's actually his grandmother's from uh, St. Kitts. Um, and there are a lot of other high-end persons and you name it that are in the world today that are from the Caribbean um, that are involved in a lot of different high-end research and development. But what's the, the question that I'm posing to us is what are we doing for ourselves? What are the problems that we are looking at and how are we going to figure out a future for us? Um, for example, one of the challenges that, that I have is in looking at the, of course you have the BRICS nations, is looking at how the Caribbean fits into that picture. You know, um, I, I'm playing a little uh, game there with the name, you know, Mazadic, because uh, I'm, I'm feeling that that name don't belong to us. Uh, uh, the Caribbean don't belong to us, I think we should change the name, but that's a discussion for another longer uh, uh, minute, but I, I like the name Mazadic for the Caribbean. You know, uh, we have one of the greatest beaches in the world, and in the Caribbean, and of course, right next door, we have Anguilla, which is number one in the Caribbean, Forbes list. We have just well, a couple of days ago, one of our top St. Martiners who graduated with some high-tech stuff, robotics. He's uh, the, the um, Deloitte representative in London and in Europe. That's our guy up there, on world level, being one of the top innovators, top um, um, advisors for technology in the world today. That's our guy, you know. Um, our, our guy, Mr. Dr. Dr. Kenneth Lai, Jr., you know. It's wonderful stuff. Um, we could be putting out some PhD students right here, you know. Why not? Right through the whole Caribbean, we could be doing it, you know. So within um, the Caribbean Institute of Innovation Technology, idea would be then to develop one of the aspects, which would then be um, Ignite, and the in, inside of Ignite would then be different um, parts where I talked about with the Caribbean, um, the Earth, and space. Looking at our reality is, in a sense, looking at the idea of David and Goliath, right? Why am I putting that? Because it's similar to saying we are the stone in David's slingshot, you know, going after space. We have to find a way to not only conquer, but we are a part of space right now. People say, oh, well, let's become astronauts. No, we are already, uh, we are already in space. Why well, have to go in space again? You know, I'm in space already. We're in space right now, you understand? And that sometimes people don't realize that. We are floating around the sun, you know? So we need to become aware and, and start thinking a little different about how we're occupying this Earth. And within the region and globally, we have to start thinking about gener being generational. You know, it's happening. But we have to be more consequent in our thinking so that we can prepare ourselves, not only with uh, knowledge, but also with the technologies that we have. Um, right now, of course, all of these are areas that we've already developed and are growing in robotics and apps and, and AI and stuff. But it's about also knowing that that's what is happening and then beginning to become more consequent with it. Remember those, those good old days, yes? And then, of course, it's now what 60 years ago that the pioneer, 1959, where, um, well, 50 years ago, where you're talking about us past or going into checking out uh, the, the moon. That's what Pioneer accomplished. But again, the Russians started the game in 1957, and the Americans went really quick to try and beat them at the game, but the Russians were the first to take us outside of our um, Earth. Uh, mobile apps, of course. This is an interesting graph to look at. Like, for instance, South Korea here, and there's a lot of other um, entities and nations represented because uh, that's the efficiency, uh, efficient um, innovations. In other words, how much innovation does your nation have? And that's sort of like the capacity is being represented with those little bubbles. Um, but why, why it's important to look at South Korea is in 2014, it was nowhere to be seen. It's low. It's low on the chart. But in, in the next chart, um, yeah. for example, this, this chart um, I received from Bud um, when we were discussing the, the, the whole thing, and you know, he sent me this image. And this was in January. Just, just a f this was the chart that was represented for January. Um, but I'm seeing all these technological advancements, but I'm not seeing the Caribbean. Wh where's, where's the Caribbean? 
in this picture. We're nowhere to be found. Why not? We're here. Well, we're on the map. But we're no law, nowhere in this, in this chart. But South Korea, who was nowhere, are, is all of a sudden there. There's another contender that's going to show up in a few minutes. You're going to see, right now you don't see Denmark anywhere. And that's just a, a little while back. But now all of a sudden, look at this chart. Denmark is there. Where did America go? America's gone. America is no longer a part of innovation. America, from January to February, technology is moving, with or without you. So it's gone within this context. Now, South Korea is still number one. Look at Singapore for a minute. Look at where it was. Number six, look at Germany. See where, where Germany was? Where Germany is in that chart? Look at this. Now it's number four. Singapore, three steps up. It's number, number three. Of course, look at Japan. Nine. Now it's gone back. Go forward, sorry. And now it's number six. Yeah? But 20 years ago, I said 20 years because it's a project back then, <laughs> you know, Japan was the number one for many years, but it's gone, yes? So technology is growing. So if you were to say, where is technology living and breathing and, and alive today? It's in Europe. Technology is in Europe right now. It's growing fast. What did Korea do? This, this shop on Tesco, Home Plus, it realized it was number two. It decided it wanted to be number one. So it in implemented these, uh, got the rights, put in these different um, panels, because people in Korea, they, they work so fast, so hard, they don't have the time to do no groceries. So what they decided to do, they put these charts in, you can then go and scan these items, and before you reach home, your groceries are waiting for you. That's, they innovated that, and now they're number one. So while you're waiting, in the, in the, waiting for the train to come, which is a, a, something that happens by them, apparently, they use their time effectively. Samsung is, of course, everybody knows, taking the planet, and they're doing building, doing whatever it's necessary to uh, develop themselves. Hyundai doing the same thing, um, growing themselves. And then I don't want to bring in God in the picture for South Korea, but 30 years ago, Korea was nothing. All I used to hear about Korea is um, uh, this, this gentleman who's praying with people and doing this with people, going up on the hill and praying, doing everything from hill to hill. They're praying. They're praying. They're crying out to God. Different, different um, cities or communities praying, praying, praying. That's what, I, that's what I used to hear about South Korea. Praying, praying, and praying. And today, look at where praying brought them. To the top. Nobody can rival South Korea today because they were doing what? Praying all the time. They, they implemented the, the prayer of David on the mountain. 24-hour prayer all the time, talking to God, being, um, being in God's face. You understand? If that's the recipe, well, let's go, brothers. Praying all the time, you know? So the, God bring them to this level. Uh, is, it, is it the answer? I don't know. I'm just telling you what I... What I read, what I heard, what I saw, and I'm seeing it in action. So should I believe or not? I don't know. It's just what happens and what's happening right now. Denmark, what brought them up here? Food, health, green. Today, Denmark, their architect is the number one in the world. Doing what? Bringing green to infrastructure around the world. A couple years ago, they were nothing. Today, again, they're number one. Where that's concerned. Russia is also pushing themselves. They have the number one park in the world right now. Based on the number one park that was in New York, they built also one now, and they're the number one, and they're growing their whole infrastructure, green experiences. They are changing the, the atmosphere, the infrastructure of their country. Now, again, translating vision into action. What is the Caribbean dealing with? We have innovation going on in the different islands, um, different islands that are doing some innovation here and there, pushing itself. But what we are doing is we are, we are appropriating technology that someone else already made. We are not really inventing, innovating something new. You know, in the Caribbean, I haven't found it. I'm looking for it, I haven't found it. You know, 
or maybe I shouldn't say it, but somebody got to say it. We have to start inventing stuff that are dealing with problems, issues, real stuff. Let's start thinking. Let's create, let's create something new. We have the opportunity. Let's do it. What is, our, what is the idea to do? Look at our strengths. Innovate. It's not only for young people. You know, mature people can do it too. Me too. <laughs> and women. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of women who are also involved in technology that a lot of people don't know about. And we have a lot of resources and things like that. Um, but also one of the most important resources we have is people. We are multi-nation people. If there's going to be innovation, we have each other that can mobilize innovation. I'm going to just go through that as the background and different things like that that we'll be talking about. Um, the invent program I can share with you later also um, as to what are the elements inside of it. Um, background, for example, one of the things, and this stuff I'm going to go through very, very quickly because, again, time-wise, I know I've probably gone here and there, but I'm just going to go through this very quickly. Just to give you a little feeling of where I came from and what I'm about. Um, again, the TU Delft. Um, let me go right here. Theo Del Vrom, Vrom Holland decided they're going to, they're always thinking 30 to 50 years ahead. And what their intention is, is always to prepare ahead. So they had a project called um, Network, uh, in other words, growing a future perspective scenario for Schiphol Holland, their main airport. And I decided to get involved in that. For two years, I got paid from my university um, to be a part of the research and development. I decided I don't want to do what they're thinking. Um, they had an idea to expand Schiphol, either the, in its location, out in front of the Schiphol, or right here. Um, I told them that I didn't think that was a good idea. I thought maybe we should do it differently. So I said to them, you know what? Let us do it different. Let us focus on creating on the Eurotunnel an infrastructure here and six more like that on the planet. And then from there, from here, begin to move logistics from point to point to the other main ports that are within, the, within Europe. And then from there, have a train, this, that, different levels of uh, infrastructure. So global logistics, space tourism, regional planning, and you, you name it, these are the things that were involved in putting this together because from here you can go into orbit as well. So the idea is then you move from there, from point to point, to the different six that are around the planet, and then from here you go into orbit accordingly, and from the orbit you go then to, to the moon and then to Mars and beyond. So you can think from there. This was the project. So it's not just talk. After one year of doing the research, my professor said, you've done it, Mr. Richardson. You finished. You can now graduate. I said, graduate? I just started. So it took me another four years to finish because now I have to go and learn about um, um, in event, um, event design, 3D modeling, uh, logistics of, of airplanes, of, of um, spaceships, of everything. You need, you need to put a project together that makes sense. I can't just do a little report. I'm here to do a design. I want to have some fun. You know, so this was the whole point. So I had to push it and take it to the next level. And these are the different factors. Um, the, the, the engineer involved in the project. Um, I don't know if you, you guys know the golden eye or the, the, the eye in um, London. Yeah, that eye, the professor who made that eye was the, the high professor at the university at the time for us. Um, when that professor saw and heard what we were intending to do, he said, sorry, I cannot get involved with this project. Too many forces, too many issues. So we had to bring the retired professor back out of retirement. And I had to go to Ada, Aiden and uh, Drieberger and so to go visit him every week with my colleague to work out the project. And we used, um, how you call it now, drill platform columns. For him, it was no problem. He said, oh, perfect. Let's do this. He worked it out, and every week we gave us homework, and we, we begin to work on the project. You know, we developed it, um, and we got wonderful um, pr um, practical, of course. Things seem like crazy at this point. In 2002, it seemed like, what are you guys doing? But today, there are all kinds of things happening in the world. Um, so this, basically, you're having the airplane landing, going down in an elevator, being serviced, and then from there, it takes off. And then here you have the cargo coming in on one level and there's all kind of distribution and logistics going on. So this would be like an element within the bigger project itself. And then here you're looking like, for instance, a, a, an element which is in the foundation, but inside of that foundation, each of these are managing cargo. 
and moving cargo. So this facility, um, as it were in the time, it was going to manage the cargo three times faster than any cargo distribution center in the world at the time. Um, so this is how it would come. The containers would come down and then be serviced and managed, uh, moved around. So we would take existing technology and turn them into something different by innovating our own idea. And this was the high-tech park. Um, the high-tech park, for example, was going to do exactly what Korea is doing right now in that train area. This was in 2002. The idea was that when you come to this location, you're able to scan and buy your items, and then from there, they, go, they reach your home when you reach. This was in 2002 that I thought about this idea already. But guess what? They're doing it now, which is good. So it's, it, that means you have a good idea. You know? <laughs> you know, what do we have? We have a multicultural condition. So we have also other assets that we can look at to grow our future. Um, one of the things then I say, okay, finish with Vaso, I have to know what is next, you know? So we're looking at understanding the region. So in 2006, I proposed the PhD concept, which was to look at the region, look at the Earth, and then look at Mars and, and beyond. And then from, so to basically to take it a little step further, I, my intention with doing my, my, my study was, you know what, if I'm gonna come back to the Caribbean, be useful, study something that gonna help, you know? So that was the reasoning behind what I was doing. Get enough information in your system based on your capacity to know that you can help us and also help not only the group but help the world, you know, so for us to be useful um, and then from there be able to move. China, what is it doing? It's investing big money, it's doing its infrastructure, the, the Silk Road, it's connecting from here to there. Why am I showing you all these things? Because again, that's what China is doing. That's what each of these nations are doing. Water projects, infrastructure projects, you name it, they're doing. Yes, looking at energy and technology. Then the Dutch, they look at their stuff, they organize their stuff, they prepare their stuff. Yeah, Val, I'm gonna be coming off soon. I'm watching you coming at me. <laughs> You're coming at me. <laughs> yes, you know, and again, they're investing money. They want to know every square meter of their country, what's going on, uh, how much, is, how much uh, money is we losing here, how much money we're gaining there, what are we doing in the Caribbean? So, and Norway is doing the same thing, setting up infrastructure, some great ideas about moving. Um, their, their technologies today, there's videos and stuff on this. They're, they're moving people through their fjords or water paths, and then they're anchoring the tunnels with traffic and stuff so that people can move underwater through. So we can connect our islands to each other by incorporating some of this stuff as well. And here we go. This is their fjords. And again, this idea, I already was talking about this idea a while back, and here they are now innovating, doing this stuff, but I was already talking about it, what, 10 years ago, you know, but it's, it's coming because these are practical things that we need to start doing. Um, so what, are we, what can we do? We can look at the region, understand our region, figure out a way to protect it from hurricanes, get energy from the hurricanes. That's what I keep talking about that because I think it's important for us to re rethink and this idea didn't just come out of nothing. I've been dealing with this, of trying to figure out how to do this for a while because we have to look at our problems as opportunities. Um, maybe my, my solution is bigger than a car, bigger than a phone, but you see how massive these other guys are thinking. Why are we not thinking bigger? We, let's, be think, let's think bigger. Let's, let's start focusing on a global level. Let's start thinking on a bigger scale so that we can grow ourselves and do something interesting for ourselves and for our generations to come. Because the ideas are the solutions that we come up with here will work on other planets that we are trying to approach. Because a lot of the concepts and thinking that they're doing right now, many of the other architects are developing strategies on how to use that um, as spin-offs into those different areas. So basically, this would be, for instance, protecting the island from the hurricanes. We would then be able to get the energy out of it. Island will be fine. We'll be enjoying. We can't wait for the next hurricane to come because energy is going to be had and we're going wonderful. It's going to be perfect. We're good. You understand? The Caribbean will be fine. We're not going to have to be worrying about the, the World Bank and all these other investments that are need to go. No, they're going to be getting money from us. You know? Here we go. I'm done. Sorry? Pegs. Passive energy generator shield. Passive energy generator shield. So this basically would be generating energy. It will become a shield. You can talk with me after that, after Valda don't show me out the door. 
And then basically looking at the region, this area here, and what can we do with the Caribbean Sea, and also connecting ourselves to Europe and beyond and also to our South American friends. How do we create an infrastructure, connecting the islands, creating a, a body of protection. Remember, I'm just brainstorming here. Well, why not? You know, we're here to create, so let's create. Let's think. Let's come out of the box. Let's create something that says, let's have the islands become the space lounge where everybody comes before they go to space. Let us have some mega yachts. I, I, I was coming with an idea, I thought, oh, let's do some giga yachts. The giga yacht already exists. You understand? That's the beast. It's out there. Casinos, all kind of things is on it. It's a beast. Uh, what are some of our assets? We can look at these areas and begin to help pr come up with um, strategic ways. And um, I'm going to finish off now. Yes? I'm just going to scroll through here so that your brain can be tampered with. And then you can always talk to me after. These are, these are buildings that are flying parts. So our buildings were no longer, so this is a concept that can be, in other words, instead of having flats with, with uh, units, each of these units would have uh, drones embedded in them, like leaves, and then they can go and be refitted in a different location, be reset, and then come back and, and plug in back into the building. So it would change the landscape of building in the world today. So these are things that we can invent and create going forward. Mm -hmm.